Welcome to episode 12 of your daily dose of Sunday School, looking at Scripture Alone by James White. We continue with the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy, with our last two articles to look at, Article 19, or 18 and 19. We affirm that the text of Scripture is to be interpreted by grammatico-historical exegesis taking account of its literary forms and devices, and that scripture is to interpret scripture. So, we study scripture, we find meaning from the text. Based on what the text says, grammatica, we're looking at the grammar, we're looking at the sentences, how the sentences form up into paragraphs. Fairly simple. We, we're treating it as a document that we trust and value very highly the truth is in there it's not in our subjective experience it's not out there the truth of what God has to say to us he is saying to us in this text and that's how we study it historical we look at its meaning uh, in that context to the people it was written and uh, taking into account literary forms and devices this is you know, poetry is poetry, um, metaphor is metaphor, and we interpret it accordingly. And I've been encouraging you to do things like uh, journaling, take uh, do do a Bible reading plan, but do it slowly so that you can journal. The greatest fruit comes as we wrestle with the meaning of the text of Scripture. I think you've seen from our own pastor how uh, wonderful truths can be uh, gleaned from the text as we wrestle with difficult texts and, and really think hard about the meaning. And we all need to be doing that sort of thing. So I've been blessed. I, I had a, a blog for about a year of college where I wrestled with James, the, the book of James, the entire year. And that was a very blessed experience because I just, uh, any questions I had, I wrestled with the, the book of James and other related books of the Bible until I had an answer. And we really need to be doing that sort of thing. Um, it can, and it can even be as simple as reading the Bible to a, a younger sibling. And I think you'll find as you're trying to explain it to a younger person that it, um, it really comes alive to you because you're really forced to think hard about it. Uh, it says... We deny the, the legitimacy sorry, of any treatment of a text or quest for sources lying behind it that leads to relativizing, dehistoricizing, or discounting its teaching or rejecting its claims of authorship. Okay, so uh, universities and seminaries are filled with people who, you know, they've got to put bread on the table. And how do they do it? They do it by writing papers. And in terms of theology and biblical studies, the easiest way to do that is to poke some hole in the Bible and argue for it. And it's junk, and those people aren't adding anything to anybody's faith, including their own, probably shipwrecking it. Um, they're just saying, well... This part, this this book, you know, Second Timothy wasn't really written by Paul, and here's why I say that. And it's just garbage. <clears throat> and it might be interesting for a bunch of eggheads to sit around and argue about. But it doesn't do anything positive. Instead of just believing the text and studying it. All right, article 19. We affirm that a confession of the full authority, infallibility, and inerrancy of Scripture is vital to a sound understanding of the whole of the Christian faith. We further affirm that such confession should lead to increasing conformity 
to the image of Christ. So, um, if you're going, uh, really vital, important doctrine is inerrancy. As I've said before, Proverbs 30, verse 5, Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. If you want to be running the race with vigor, if you want to be uh, as strong as you can be, you want to be taking refuge in his word. <coughs> but, excuse me. By believing, <laughs> by believing every word of it. And uh, so that's, that's the only way that, that that's going to happen. It says that we deny that such confession is necessary for salvation. However, however, we further deny that inerrancy can be rejected without grave consequences, both to the individual and to the church. Inerrancy is not the gospel. But you know, it's, it's very, very close to the heart of the gospel. It's taking refuge in him, trusting what he has said. And so there is, uh, you know, there are people who are strong in the faith and, and wise who deny it, but there's not many of them. And their churches are weak, and I would argue that they could be potentially stronger in the faith um, and it's like they've got this gaping wound that they're losing blood from and they they need to heal it up by really trusting every word of God and it would make them even stronger in the faith have a great day study the word